Mom, I'm here with you, all right? You're looking good. There's no bugs on you, okay? I don't see any bugs I on you. I need my hair. Got in out. My mom's having like a panic attack. What the actual heck? Bugs in your hair crawling up your nose? That's not what you want on your wedding day. This has got to be the most nightmarish, most hellish wedding ever. There's just no way that this is a good omen. I have never experienced something so literally traumatic to me. Okay. I can't do this. It's too much. Is Angela just talking about the bugs, I wonder? Now, before we unpack this nightmare, let's start at the beginning. So we left Brandon and Mary in the last episode, just as hell descended on their wedding. A huge swarm of beetles invaded the wedding reception. They showed up like an unwanted wedding guest, like that creepy uncle. And right now, they're literally wreaking havoc. They're crawling up guests' noses, they're getting stuck in hair, and they've even made their way underneath clothes. They're all over you. Come I here. know. I've, this is ridiculous. Oh, Jeez. Oh, God. <laughs> Kill that light. Jesus. This is like something out of a horror movie. The bugs are invading everything. Like, it's truly horrifying. Even the camera crew, who usually just record everything and stay out of the picture, have become part of the story. They're getting begged to turn off their lights. And it's no surprise that the person suffering the most right now is Angela. My mom is very, very, very scared of basically anything that has legs, crawls on walls, and is good at hiding. I don't see or feel it in your hair. That's just in your mind, okay? That's just in your mind. Poor Angela. This isn't just disgusting and scary. It's actually really traumatic. Like, she's doing everything in her power to rein in and control what appears to be the start of a panic attack. <sighs> Mom, I'm here with you, all right? You're looking good. There's no bugs on you, okay? I don't see any bugs on you. I need my hair. Yeah, My mom's having like a panic attack. It's crazy. Like in years to come, when Angela or any of the other guests think back to this wedding, this swarm of beetles will be their overriding memory. That's not what you want people to remember your wedding for. But right now, as Angela is panicking and the production crew desperately tries to hurry her into one of the parked vans, Angela continues to freak out. She's sure that she feels the bugs crawling around in her hair. Deep breaths, deep breaths, okay? I can still feel the hair. I can, I can tell you for a fact, I don't see or feel it in your hair. Brandon does his very best to try and take his mum's mind off the bugs. He urges her to focus on how beautiful the wedding ceremony was before the uninvited guests. But that's easier said than done, Brandon. Now, amidst all of this chaos, there is something really lovely about seeing Brandon there for his mum, supporting her in the same way that she's been there for him over the last few days. But this is certainly a shocking end to Angela's time in the Philippines. I have never experienced something so literally traumatic to me. Okay. I can't do this. It's too much. Now, while Angela's left freaking out in the car, Brandon hops out to try and cajole all the rest of the family. He looks to find his wife to see how she's dealing with all of this. Only <laughs> he might wish that he hadn't. You see, the whole thing just gets more nightmarish. Mary explains that the bugs have found their way into the multiple layers of her wedding dress. And they're all so enmeshed and ingrained in the dress that there's no hope for her getting them out before she steps foot in the van. The van that Angela's already freaking out in. They're inside? Oh, man. I'm trying to stay calm, even though I'm scared. But some of the bugs are inside my dress, biting me. What? The bugs are now biting people? It just gets worse and worse. Like, I know that Mary's not the most liked person. Not by any stretch. But you really wouldn't wish this on your worst enemy. The poor girl was telling us how she dreamed of a Hollywood-style wedding, but instead of dancing and eating cake, she's literally trapped inside her dress as the beetles crawl all over her and bite her. This isn't Hollywood. This is far from a fairy tale. It's a nightmare. 
But just when you thought this couldn't possibly get any worse, somehow it does. I need to look for my wedding ring. Like I'm doing this and my ring came off. I, I don't know what happened to it. The icing on top of this disastrous wedding cake is that somehow Brandon, amongst all of the chaos, has now lost his wedding ring. So let me just quickly recap. We've got Angela having a panic attack, all the guests fleeing in fear, Mary's being bitten alive by bugs trapped in the layers of her dress, and now Brandon is desperately scrambling on his hands and knees to try and find his lost wedding ring. Wow, sorry, I don't care what anyone says. This wedding is cursed. Here it is. Found it. Awesome. Are they biting you? Yeah, they're in my boobs. Just want to change. Thankfully, the lost wedding ring is recovered, and they all managed to make it out of the wedding venue alive. But I think we should take a second to focus on Mary here. Sure, she might be jealous, she might be rude and just a little bit crazy, but right now, she really is taking this like a champ. This is her wedding, she's pregnant, she's being bitten all over her body. Emotions must be running high, yet despite everything, she still made sure that Angela was okay. It was Mary that put her arm round Angela's waist, that guided her to safety. Mary hasn't complained once, even though you can be sure what's just happened must have broken her heart. I feel sad because it's not really the day that we planned and I feel so bad for all the guests. I really do feel sorry for Brandon and Mary. No one deserves to have what's supposed to be the happiest day of their lives ruined in such biblical proportions. Hopefully in years to come, maybe they'll be able to look back on this and laugh at how crazy it really was. But for now at least, they're choosing to focus on the positives. They're back home, they're safe, and they're married. But there is still one thing that they need to do. They need to cut their wedding cake. The only problem is, it's covered in bugs. Cluck the bugs off and then get rid of the frosting, and it'll be a good cake. Hey. I don't suppose you want some, do you? Nope. <laughs> Yeah, no surprise that Brandon's mum isn't interested in a buggy slice of wedding cake. She's just come out of her room to say goodnight to the newlyweds, to tell them both how proud she is of them, to commend them for overcoming all the obstacles in their way to this wedding, not just today, but also in the lead up to the big day. I'm proud of both of them for what they've overcome to be together. If they can work together as a team, then I really do believe that they have like the makings of an epic sort of love story. That's very sweet of Angela, and I'm sure it will mean the world to both Brandon and Mary. Now, who's going to return that favour? Who's going to tell Angela how proud they are of her? She also deserves credit. I mean, she's managing sobriety, she's successfully mending her relationship with Brandon, she's building a relationship with her daughter-in-law, and she's just survived what you'd probably imagine to be her worst creepy-crawly nightmare. So Angela can really hold her head up high as she says goodnight. I get terry-eyed because I feel that we're really okay now. Both women have come so far since their first meeting, where neither was willing to hug the other. It seems unreal that that was only a few days ago, because they've both grown so much. But it's not just them that needed to grow. Brandon's also been on his own journey, and truth be told, he's still got a long way to go. And what better time than right now on his wedding night, as he's eating his wedding cake, to make that promise to his wife that he will do better. I want to be able to show you that, you know, I can participate, like I'll be more involved in finances and not just sit on the sidelines. Brandon knows that he's got to step up to the plate, both as a partner, but also as a parent. And he says that he's ready for that responsibility. But Mary's a little nervous. You see, she's heard all of this before, but for now, she chooses to believe him. She chooses to believe that today marks a new start. They're now married. Brandon has come through with this. He told her he was going to marry her. 
So now, according to the laws of the Philippines, they're in this together. There is no divorce. Till death do them part. We are now married. He can now look for a job. I feel like he really loves me that we won't leave each other no matter what. This is a fresh start for us. <laughs> The difference from where they began to where they are now is stark. We can all see that they're growing. So is it beyond the realms of possibility that these two might be able to make it work? They might be able to be happy? Well, if you'd asked me a few months ago, I'd have said impossible. But now, today, maybe, just maybe, I'm kind of rooting for them.